Hey folks, this is Matt once again. Um, happy Thanksgiving. This will probably upload after Thanksgiving, so hopefully people had a happy Thanksgiving. Um, also, I hope no one got killed during Black Friday. Because I went Black Friday one time, I think a year or two ago. I'm never going in yet, because Black Friday to me is a bullshit. I mean, there's actually a list somewhere, real off course, but... Like the 13 worst deaths and injuries during Black Friday. And the fact that you can come up with 13. Including like uh, a pregnant woman trampled and a fucking woman paralyzed and people getting killed because... Of Black like you can find the shit online for the same price. But I know that's off topic but I just had to mention that. So, but anyway, um, yeah, since I have the unlimited upload, because I'm bored, because I got everything I wanted caught up, um, <clears throat> and I had done, I talked about VHS that I own a long time ago, and I figured I've thankfully gotten a lot new, more people, why not show my VHS collection, since... Again, I have the unlimited upload, and why not? <coughs> I won't do it for my DVD because it'll be like five, six hours long, but... <coughs> Excuse me for my throat's a little... <coughs> of course, I'm dumb. I should be drinking water instead of soda. <coughs> why not get right off to it? These are cheats, but I'm a cheater, so... <clears throat> these don't count because these are the ones I taped. Well, <laughs> <Hell, clears throat> I'll admit, I was, for the longest time growing up, we would just rent movies and tape them. For our own use, we never sell them. For example, here, I taped uh, The Breakup with Vince Vaughn. Oh, only because it was like one funny outtake, and I was able to find out how you can actually. I rented a DVD and I liked but that was the only part I liked, so I taped that part. Um, Intruder. This is when I was actually in Texas and go, uh, Hastings. Um, they actually had a thing where wonderful rental place, not just to buy movies, but the rental place portion of it was huge. I mean, they actually had Intruder on DVD for rent. And I'm like, well, do I want to buy it? Well, I could just run it and tape it. <laughs> and then ultimately I did buy it. I know there's a Blu-ray coming out of it. And then Endangered Species, that's one with Eric Roberts. I think Arnold Vosloo. Endangered Species. I remember liking it okay. And I know these are cheats. <clears throat> but I just wanted to mention because they are VHSs. Cannonball Run 2001. I don't know if anyone even remembers that. I remember. Also, some of G4, weirdly enough, uh, the video game channel, when it was a video game channel. I must have had maybe psychic powers because I knew G4 was not going to last forever, at least the ones I loved. So I taped some of the G4 stuff. Um, I wish there was a channel that, that just had all the old G4 stuff. I mean, like every episode. I mean, it's forgotten now. But Cannibal won 2001, this was like, uh, they went from, like, New York to L.A. or something like that. And they had, like, a, kind of like a reality show, but not really. But it was also like a game show, but not really. Um, I don't know, I just found a lot of fun. Plus, the guys I pit won at the end. So, I like that. Um... This one uh, was just the grassy Jane Song Bob Strike Back and Resurrection with uh, Christopher Lambert. Which I like to get on DVD one day, Resurrection. Uh, These are the last couple. Um, once again, I, I taped some of the G4 and Steer Tactics um, on these. Because Steer Tactics, they never released them officially, I think. They, they released some of them, but then it was a bullshit release. I'm like, well, fuck that. That's pointless and stupid. At least in my opinion. 
Um, Shrimp on the Barbie and Rude Awakening, two films with Cheech Marin. Um, Moon Trap, which I have now on uh, DVD, thanks to Michael Keane. Ernest Rides Again, which I'm a big fan of Ernest, and I don't think Ernest, I think that's one the only, that's like the only one that's not on DVD for some reason. Ernest Rides Again, I don't think so. Um, that's And that's one I liked. This is one that was meant for my brother, but I took it from him. It was all the Abbott Costello movies. <laughs> it says to my brother for his 11th birthday, and I guess I, I guess I took it. Yeah, I guess I took it um, because he didn't watch him. So I'm like, uh, you're an ass. I'll just take your tape. <laughs> yeah. I'm a bad boy. Um, and this one I I keep because it has uh, the. Richard Pryor from Queer Cool Condition. And that's only because I just haven't had a chance to find them on DVD or find them cheap enough on DVD or they're not released on DVD. But get to the actual VHSs. I think because with VHSs, I don't really collect. I mean, I have a lot of them. I mean, right here is probably the whole set. That's a lot, but I know people who have like a whole room full of VHSs. Like my friend. OCP, uh, Mike, uh, if he gets his stuff back, even the stuff he has now, he probably could fit like two rooms full of VHS. And it'd be nice to collect them, but I don't. A, because they're expensive. B, because it'd be tough enough to find them. But just looking at VHSs, what's nice about a lot of them is that they have beautiful, they have great covers. That's why a lot of times I look on the internet for websites that have like VHS covers and there's a couple of them like I found VHS warehouse or VHS wasteland stuff like that a lot of them just have beautiful covers a lot of times better than the movie <laughs> and definitely better than when they go on DVD like the Monster Squad even Friday the 13th movies like the covers on the VHS are better than the ones on the DVD Nightmare on Elm Street film same thing it's a shame though like the shitty Nightmare on Elm Street covers they have on the DVDs, but you look at the VHSs and they look beautiful. So that's what sucks, though. Um, they go to DVD and then they have these shitty ass covers. But anyway, uh, getting right to it, the actual ones. Uh, you have a Reindeer Games. I know someone's like, "Why'd you buy this?" Well, because it was cheap. It was a dollar. A lot of these movies are more like we don't have them for rent, um, or I like them okay, but I don't want to buy a DVD for five dollars. I have a VHS player, so why don't I just get the movie for a dollar? You know, I'm not buying it. You know, instead of paying five dollars for a DVD, I just buy this for a dollar, and it's the same movie. And you know, Ben Affleck film. I like Ben Affleck. I mean, I like the film okay. It just felt a little... For some reason, it felt long or something like that. But I liked it okay, Braindeer Games. Find a way to put this. I'm not double doing it. Once again, this was a film that I want to review some Eddie Murphy films one day. Not anytime soon, but Holy Man. More like Holy Shit. This movie's bad. Um... I like that clever. I don't know, I like VHS. I like, you know, I like the look of them, but I wouldn't collect them like my, some a lot of people out there. Not that they're it's a bad thing. I just I could just imagine how expensive that'd be with all the VHSs out there. But holy man, I, I wasn't a, the biggest fan of this movie. Again, I only got this because, you know. If I want to review one day and I don't want to see it online or try to download it and get a virus, then I can just pop it in and see it. Hulk Hogan. He was a wrestler I grew up watching. I'm not really a fan of him anymore, but that's Mr. Nanny. It's pretty bad. I mean, Hulk Hogan, no wonder you didn't have a film career. Um. The Rock should have seen this and been like, hey, don't do the Tooth Fairy. But 
money makes idiots out of people. I mean, these are kind of cheats, but no. Soldier with Kurt Russell, Ready to Rumble with David Arquette. This film might love to death. I wish they would release this, re-release this officially on DVD. Re-release it, get it a widescreen, and give it a better picture. Because I love this film to death, and that is Split Second. He's seen the future. Now he has to kill it. I love Split Second. And... HBO Video. He'll need bigger guns. I just love this film to death. It's uh, definitely a childhood favorite of mine. Still love it to this day. I know some people don't like it because we could use some more action at the end, but um, it's not too long. Great back and forth between the two leads. Kim Trotrol is very nice as well. See a little bit of her nudity. Uh, creature's pretty... I don't mind the creature look. I know a lot of people don't like the look of the creature, but I like it. I mean, definitely Guider-esque, H.R. Dieter type. I love Split Second. I wish they would release on DVD, so get a better, get some better picture and widescreen. I got this because well, I was drunk, but I don't drink, so must have been something else. Honestly, I think I got this because Christina Ricci and Duddy Doug, I like those two. And to see how bad this was. That damn cat. Oh, I'm sorry, darn. That shitty cat. Yeah. And it is pretty bad, so. I, I think I'm going to throw them away. Then I think, well, maybe one day I'll just rant on it just for a random rant. I don't know. Like... I ran to on this film, it's on the channel. Um, I love the first one to death, but this one, Three Men and a Little Lady, I do not like at all. Um, and weirdly enough, I think this was actually a big hit, which surprised the shit out of me. This actually made some dough, this made some money. I think I said in that review too. I did. I reviewed both of these films. I love Three Men and a Baby, I love Three Men and a Baby. This film sucked balls. The little girl was annoying. It wasn't funny. Going to fucking England was a big mistake. Um, Steve Grunberg and Ted Danson didn't seem like they were in the fucking movie that much. It was more about Tom Selleck and Nancy Travis. And I didn't like Nancy Travis' character. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about this bitch. Days of Thunder. Decided to watch this again. And okay, you know. Instead of buying the DVD, I'll just get it for a dollar and check it out. And I liked I liked it. Better than I remembered. Um, I like the score by Hans Zimmer. Uh, and plus, it is sponsored by my favorite drink. So, look at this, folks. Look at this. Melly Yellow. Wait, 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 wait. Melly Yellow. And I'm dropping my shit. Cause I'm trying to see. mellow yellow, mellow yellow. He drives the mellow yellow car. Cue the '80s music commercial. Give me my check. Days of Thunder. People, why don't you get these on DVD? Well, because I have them on VHS. Why do I need them on DVD for? VCR still works. Fuck it. Plus, it's cheaper getting this this way. I'm cheap skate. The Believers. With Martin Sheen. I like this film. This is when they try to do a lot of these zombie type movies. The zombies, but they're not really zombies. Like, more like a realistic take. Like, Super and the Rainbow. Um, and this film, The Believers. They say zombies, but more like a cult. Like, like religious cult, worshippers, stuff like that. They say zombies, but I should say more like voodoo. Voodoo is the better word for it. These voodoo type movies. 
Which I know Sister Hubert hated these type of movies. Oh, what a fuck it. The Believers. I like this film. It's a solid flick. Martin Sheen, Helen Shaver, Robert Loja. Loja. Oh, man. Whiskers and Gits. Solid performances. Not a film I would watch all the time, though. I got this just a curiosity because I like the two actors, and it wasn't that good. Jeff Daniels, Christopher Lloyd, my favorite Martian. Oh, no shit, man, it's Disney. Well, it doesn't mean, just because it's Disney doesn't mean it's bad. There's some decent Disney movies. This isn't one of them, though. <laughs> yeah. My favorite Martian. Where the fuck to put these? Um, this one I gave it a watch one time and got bored to death. And that is The Quest. Van Damme's The Quest is better than this movie. I'm sorry. Henry Tives, a star of E.T., invites you on a journey beyond your imagination. An adventure for the hero and all of us. Where does the legend end and reality begin? Um, what the fuck is this about? I know I saw it once. Cody learns of an ancient myth, the story of Donkadian. Donkadian. He is told to leave it alone, but the legend sparks his lively imagination. To find all authority, Cody and his girlfriend Wendy embark on a search that takes him into the shadowland of mystery and to the edge of death. What? That is not the movie. This movie is a fucking boring ass movie where Henry Thomas dances with a girl, talk, 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 they look, 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 and there is no fucking monster or anything. They don't find shit. They don't find really much of anything. I can't remember what the fuck it was they found, but I don't give a shit. This movie sucks. It's boring as hell. And yet, uh, this one I got because I like the first one. Fortress 2 Reentry, Christopher Lambert. Locked in a prison orbiting 26,000 miles above Earth, the state was never thought possible until now. But Fortress 2, I mean, it's watchable for me. It's definitely not as good as the first one. What hammers with this film is A, special effects. I mean, it's low budget, but special effects. Um, B, there's certain logic. <laughs> that uh, is very questionable which I won't get into now uh, and it just seems like a, a repeat of the first film I know that sounds stupid I mean that's the point but it's like okay this guy did all this shit in the first fortress uh, you should put a little bit more leash on this guy I mean you know you got bad guys are pretty fucking stupid oh this is high test security prison you got out of in the first movie but uh, La di da di da, and of course he does it again. <laughs> but it's watchable. I didn't watch it. I mean, I didn't watch it. Then uh, John Cusack's The Sure Thing. At least there, at last, there's a movie about teenagers that's fun, even if you're way past 21. Rob Reiner's new romantic comedy with Rob, with uh, John Cusack and Daphne Zunega. After striking out with the girls in high school, Gibb begins his freshman year at an Eastern college full of hope for improving his love life. Enter Allison, prim and proper, well organized and extremely annoyed by Gibb. The two end up accidentally sharing a ride to California during the Christmas break. Allison to visit her preppy boyfriend, Gibb to visit his best friend who has assured him of a good time with a guaranteed sure thing. Gibb slowly learns, however, that the sure thing may come once in a lifetime, but the real thing lasts forever. A lot of critical notices. I saw this once, The Sure Thing, and I'll be honest, I was not that impressed. I really wasn't. Maybe I have to see it again, but the first time I saw this, I'm like, okay, I'd rather go watch Better Off Dead. This one I actually reviewed um, Nightbreaker, Milo Estevez, Martin Sheen, and Leah Thompson. I have reviewed this film, it's on my channel, and uh, interesting movie. I guess this was made for TV. Um, but it's interesting because Martin Sheen plays a. What was it? 
Basically, it's about these tests that were done in the 50s on soldiers about nuclear radiation. And Martin Sheen is now older, and he finds out that there's certain people are kind of having the effects on it. And it goes back to the 50s where, um, flashbacks to the 50s where Emilio Estevez plays the younger Martin Sheen. And about how soldiers were, had to march through ground zero and studied the effects of uh, radiation. And how many years later there's the threat of radiation poisoning, stuff like that, from these tests. Uh, not an action film, not a thriller. It's more of a, a talky film, but it was an interesting film. Interesting ideas, interesting story. I reviewed this film, so if you want to know more, you can check out that review. I got this because the guys that did Pit had talked about this film a lot, and I saw this. I'm like, okay, I'll check it out. I don't think it's ever been on DVD. If it has, I'll never buy it. The Peanut Butter Solution, A Hair Raising Adventure. Um, yeah, this movie's weird, but it also sucks. Um, it's just fucking strange. It's like. The fuck was like they they go this girl or who was it no it's a guy oops guy goes in like a kid goes in his house and then he leaves and then all of his hair is fucking gone um then he does something the hair keeps growing and growing and growing uh, and then like he has like an Asian friend who like puts the stuff like near his balls and you see hair pubic hair grow and this is a PG family film by the way folks and like songs performed by Celine Dion I didn't even fucking know that I don't remember any songs by Celine Dion 1985 Celine Dion was a lot well she was doing stuff back then this movie makes no fucking sense. It's pretty fucking stupid. Family Film Festival Award winner? Yeah. Maybe they were high. And then that's how they understood it. Fuck's sake. This I got because uh, it has Chris Sarandon based on Dean R. Koontz. And I like Dean Koontz. I like Phantoms. I like Watchers. Now this whispers... Was Chris Sarandon. and this film was boring as shit. This is probably one I will get rid of. <clears throat> yeah, this movie is boring as fucking sneakers. I like sneakers, you know. Nice cast: Robert Redford, Dan Aykroyd, Ben Kingsley, Mary McDowell, River Phoenix, Cindy Poitier, David Strathairn. Um, interesting little kind of thriller. I think mainly if it wasn't for the cast, um, it'd be forgettable for me. But because of the cast, interesting little flick. This is a nice one. An Innocent Man. Good performance by Tom Selleck. Two cops on the tape just made the biggest mistake of their lives. They framed an innocent man. That reminds me a lot of with so Stallone. Um, I don't know why, for some reason, oh, I think this is directed by Peter Yates. I think the same guy who directed Kroll, I believe. Maybe wrong. But for some reason, this always made me think it was a TV movie for some reason. You, you know. I know it's rated R, that's what it says, but it didn't feel like it was an R-rated film. And I don't know, just, there's always, I always thought this was like a TV movie. It kind of feels like a TV movie, but I like Innocent Man. Tom Sow gave a good performance. I got this because I like the cast. I actually found some parts funny. America's Sweethearts, John Cusack, Julie Roberts, Billy Crystal. Captain Zeta Jones. I like the film. Again, I got some laughs out of it. I like the cast. And, uh, 
I'll be right to that. Joe Roth. I don't know who the fuck that is. Anyway, yeah. I had some fun. This I got because I wanted to rewatch it because um, Liam Neeson stars in it. And Liam Neeson is a badass and taken. And um, I wasn't a big fan of Unknown, but Liam Neeson was not the problem in Unknown. So I wanted to check it out again because Liam Neeson, The Haunting. And after checking it out again, it still sucks. <laughs> Um, yeah, still sucks. It's fucking long, too, an hour and 53 minutes. But, uh, yeah. The house looks good. Doesn't look creepy, but it looks nice. But, uh, yeah. The haunting. I'd rather go with House on Haunted Hill remake, to be honest. At least for me. I want to check this out because I don't mind Hugh Grant and certain stuff. Like I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind Notting Hill. I'll be honest. This sucked though. Mitty Blue Eyes. This wasn't that funny. Probably another one I would get rid of. Actually, I should just take the shit I'll get rid of and put them in a pile. Yeah. So I'm gonna get rid of this one. That darn cat. Fuck reviewing them. If I, if I do review them, I'll just find them online to watch. Fuck it. Fuck having them there. Fuck it. Might as well. Quest, I can kiss my ass. It's a VH update and. Sure thing, I'll get rid of that too. Now it's a VH update, but I'm getting rid of shit too, so it's a VH disappearance. Um, what the fuck was that other one? I don't fucking remember. Shit. Oh. Whispers. I'll give her that one too. Give her some of the shit. Fuck it. Yeah, I'm a face. Uh, Courage Under Fire. Good one with Denzel Meg Ryan. Nice little flirt. Let's see. This is Spinal Tap. Fun movie. Let's see. The Chase. Charlie Sheen is winning. Winning. And an old joke. I like this film though. This is actually a 20th Century Fox film when they were actually Fox. When this, this was a good movie. Fast paced film. Under 90 minutes. Um. I think I might get the DVD of this sometime because I like this film to chase. Very fast paced, lots of action, some fun moments, um, nice idea where the whole film is just one long chase. Um, but a lot of fun, the chase. I, I liked it. This one, some of uh, some these I won't throw away because I would give them another shot. But those down there, I won't give another shot. Fuck them. This one, I don't know. I didn't like it. Maybe I'll give another shot one day, but blown away. Because I like these two actors, but Breath Devastating Thrill Miss, Stappy Heart Thriller, easily one of the year's best. I'm sorry, Jeffrey Lyons. I highly disagree. Highly disagree. This film was boring. It's two hours and one minute. That's two hours too long. I just, this is a boring movie. Really boring. Uh, I'll check it out maybe. I'll give it another chance maybe one time, but the only time it was good was when the explosions happened. I didn't watch a lot of movies for that. Shit. I hated this film. Maybe one day I'll this is maybe one I'll actually will watch again and rip apart. Like those other films like The Quest, Whispers, That Darn Cat. Who gives a fuck? But this one I did not like at all. Which is weird because it's actually produced by Tony Danza and Emilio Estevez. I would like to talk to them and ask them. Um, I want an explanation for this movie. The Jerky Boys. As in, they can kiss my ass. 
No, I did not get into their prank phone call shit, their smash hit CDs. Johnny B and Kamal. That's why they never acted again, because they suck balls. Shitty ass movie. Not funny, in my opinion. Be funny to rip a fart. This one I liked okay. Um, a John Carpenter production. What is this? Oh, is that you produced by John Carpenter? I think at one time he was going to direct it, but he didn't know how to end it, so someone else did. That is, uh, trying to, who the hell actually directed this? Social producer, music, well, it's the Philadelphia Experiment. The experiment that should never have happened 41 years ago is still going on. With Michael Pere and Nancy Allen. Um, directed by Stuart Raffle, whatever the fuck that is. Yeah, I didn't mind this film. No, I have not seen the sequel, but I didn't mind this film. I'm not going in depth, because maybe I'll review some of these sometime down the road, not anytime soon. This is one with Michael Bean. This is a screener copy. But it's with Michael Bean, and it's Time Bomb. Eddie K was trained to kill, ordered to destroy, programmed to forget. Now the most dangerous man is about to explode. Time Bomb. This is actually the film where there's actually a shootout in a porno movie theater. <laughs> um, and it actually has the girl from uh, Lethal Weapon 2. I forgot what her fucking name was, though. Because there's nothing on the back about anything. Because this is a screener copy. Which somehow... I don't know how the hell all these screeners like went to the public. Because you always find them now. And they're always like, This cannot be sold for retail. And then you always find them. <laughs> For some fucking reason. This I bought when uh, I was in Texas, and there was a uh, half price books. And I like Mark DeCostos, and I like this film. And it's Crying Freeman. The first live action manga movie. I don't know if that's true, but Once in a Lifetime comes the perfect killer. Mark DeCostos. Good opening. The only problem I have with the movie is that the middle is kind of slow. But it's a good opening and a good ending. Really saves the film. The middle's kind of slow, but definitely one of Martha Costa's better movies. Probably in his top three. Like, Drive number one. I'd say probably DNA's number two, and this is probably number three. Because he doesn't have that many great films, unfortunately, but. Crying Freeman. No. Only, the, only the Strongs. Decent, so maybe that'd be number four. Well, I like Iron Omega as well, so maybe that'd be Iron Omega probably number two, really, and then DNA number three, and then this would be number four, and only the strong number five. But I like the film Crying Freeman. Uh, where to go next? This one I I don't mind. I think my friend Mike does not like the movie. <laughs> I don't mind this film though. Baby's Day Out. Was it Mike? It was someone else maybe. I know it was a John Hughes production and it didn't really do well. I think they thought it was going to do well and it didn't. Fox that is. I don't mind the film. It's unrealistic. But I like the movie still. This is one I'll throw away because it's a piece of shit. Um, Slaughter in San Francisco. I got it because I want to check it out because I'm a Chuck Norris fan. And he's in this film for about five minutes. And he's the bad guy and he gets his ass kicked. So that's going to the dumpster. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Fierce Creatures. I got this because it's all the same cast from A Fish Called Wanda. And this is okay, but forgettable. But John Cleese, Jamie Lee Curtis, Kevin Klein, Michael Palin. It's good for, you know, nice cast. Definitely not as good as A Fish Called Wonder, though. 
I got this because I like Miguel Ibanez Jr. from Return of Living Dead and other stuff. This wasn't that good though. Juana Man. As a woman, he got deemed. Yeah, this. I didn't think it was that good, to be honest. Might get rid of this one, too. Yeah, fuck it. Gone. Hot to Trot. This film definitely has an interesting history. The guy who created the TV show Monk, which I like, had a hand in this, and he talked about how. You know, they. Really enough, this film was made. There's an interesting bash story on this I want to get into really quick. Like, because I know this is Bobcat Goldthwait, and it's actually John Candy as the voice of the horse. Um, again, there is a definitely interesting bash story, because this just goes to show how the fuck people are stupid sometimes. Yeah, the original cast for this film included Joan Rivers in Bobcat Goldthwait's role, and Elliot Gould was the voice of the horse. There was a poor test screening. The horse's half of the script was rewritten. John Kane was hired to re-record the voice, who disregarded the script and improvised the dialogue. And so the film came out, was a flop, and... A lot of people hated it. Yeah. You can't make a film and then, oh shit, and then it's like, you know. You filmed all the horse shit now. <laughs> horse shit. You filmed all the horse stuff and, you know, now back to your oh, That's just stupid, but anyway. But hot to try. I don't. I didn't watch the film. I didn't watch the film, but yeah, I didn't understand why people hate it though. But I don't mind it. I like Bobcat Goldthwait. I think that's why. You have this film with Kathleen Turner, Dennis Quaid, Undercover Blues, which I gotta be honest, I was not a fan of this movie. Probably get rid of it. Um, I don't know, I just found the film kind of boring, not really that funny, the action scenes weren't anything. Um, basically these two were just so cocky, like they knew what to do and everything, and it was like, well, okay, there's no suspense. Just didn't think it was that funny, so I'll probably get rid of this one too, that would go in the trash. And before I go on, I am going to turn the light on because it's getting dark out. And that way you can actually see, and that way I can get some of the stuff and put it away so I can have some more room. So, be right back. I don't know where you fuckers. Shit. Shit. I have my fucking way. There we go. Shit. Shit, don't fall. And since I'm over here, I might as well do these quick too. Ah, come on, motherfucker. Ah, the way. Shit. This stuff too. Yeah. Ow. Damn it, yeah, my way. Fuck this shit. Put that under there. What? Can you can you fit in there?
Ah, oh, shoot, my arm's caught. Come on. Fucker. Stop getting my way and get in my way. Back to the VHS sub collection, which I'm throwing stuff away. So, okay, these two, I think I want to review one day, but they're very shitty. And I said one day, not anytime soon. This one is uh, nine and a half ninjas. There's a sticker in there. I'm not taking it off. I did not pay that, by the way. This is supposed to be a parody, I guess, like nine and a half weeks, but with ninjas. This is abysmal, fucking horrible film. The first erotic martial arts action comedy. I don't think I want to review this. Fuck it, I'm throwing it away. Never mind that. Maybe this one I'll review one day, though. Michael Dudikoff. Virtual Assassin, all this sh shit, even if it's bad special effects, none of that's in the movie. Um, this is Die Hard meets Blade Runner, I love that. <laughs> this is, once again, a very fucking shitty action movie. Virtual Assassin. Uh, let's see. Film that I don't mind. I might not, it's okay. Reign of Fire. It's an okay film. I don't hate the film. I don't know, I just... I don't know, I remember seeing the trailer and go, oh, cool. But for some reason, the film didn't deliver 100% for me. I don't know what it is. It was okay, but I don't know, there's something about the pace or something. I got this because I remember watching this cartoon as a kid. <laughs> Pro stars Michael Jordan, Wayne Gretzky, and Bo Jackson. Bo knows Bo. Do you know Bo? Do you, does anyone even fucking remember Bo? Probably not. But yeah, pro stars. I got this one because I'm a fan of the first one. I love the first one. This film is a big step down. And for one thing, it's rated PG-13 when the first one was rated R. Another stakeout. <clears throat> I love the first stakeout. Love the first stakeout. Love it. That's the one. That's the film I want to review sometime because not many people talk about stakeout anymore. This film, though, which if I review that one, I guess I'd have to review this one. This film, fuck. Rosie O'Donnell should not should be banned from movies. And any entertainment value. Um, they should not have shaved their mustaches. Because it was a bad call. They both had their mustaches in the first one. It's a good movie. Maybe if they have their mustaches on. And if it was rated R. And if they had better villains. Like this film felt more like a, a sissy. You know. Like oh the first one's too violent. We gotta make it more for families. This is a fun one. Hell Comes to Fraud Town. Roddy Piper. Roddy Piper, man. This and They Live alone were solid stuff for Roddy Piper. I even like the stuff he did with Billy Blames. But Hell Comes to Fraud Town. And no, I did not see the sequel Fraud Town 2. Don't want to. No Roddy Piper, no call. This one, I wish Mike Myers would do more movies like this. So I married an axe murderer. I like this film. I like this Michael Myers. I like, I'll be honest, I like this film more than the Shrek movies. I'm sorry, I do. I like this better than fucking his love guru. Or, I will admit, I like this better. Well, I like the first Awesome Powers. The second and third have their moments, but I wish he would do more like this, where he's just a regular guy. Like, Adam Sandler does it all the time. Why can't Mike Myers do that? Because of this one movie? 
Like, do a movie where you don't play a character. You don't have makeup and shit. Or your voice. You know, Mike Myers? You, like, no Austin Powers 4. Just do a movie like this where you're a normal guy. You know? Even this, though, he played a, another character, his own dad. But I mean, like, just do this. Play like a regular guy like Adam Sandler does all the time and shit. You know, I like to see some more Mike Myers of just this, you know? And I, I like this one. I don't think it's that bad of a flick. This I would like to get on DVD, but um, haven't yet. The Unnameable, which I did a review for this film and the second one, which I actually have the DVD of the second film. But The Unnameable, which I enjoy. It's a monster movie I grew up with, and H.P. Lovecraft's uh, The Unnameable. I enjoy the film. This one I was very surprised by. Really liked. Downtown. With Anthony Edwards and uh, Forrest Whitaker. Two buddies, two cops. Together they're about to turn things upside down. Downtown. When you pound this beat, it pounds you back. I like Downtown. I really enjoyed it. That was one I definitely was surprised by. Um, some of the stuff, like, I was kind of interested in these wrestlers. So, like, The Rock. So, you know, I found them for cheap. So, you know, The Rock just bring it. And know your role. Because I like The Rock. I like Dwayne Johnson. He has a nice personality. Um, also, some Stone Cold S Steve Austin. Which, like, it's 316 and... Hell yeah. I wish he would bring this personality to movies. Because when they when he does a movie, he always very few words. And I'm like, that's not you in wrestling. I mean, in wrestling, you're always talking. I don't know what you said. Da, 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 da. You know, like you have an energy. And then you, for some reason, when you do a movie, you don't have it. I don't get it. <laughs> like, why can't you be like, you know, I don't, I don't understand. What made you popular in wrestling, you know, very energetic, talking, and you don't do that in a movie. You're just very... Makes no sense. Um, I like Adam Costello. Um, I have some of their stuff. Like, well, like I, I have that tape that I stole from my brother <laughs> when we were kids. My older brother, that is. Well, I only have one brother. I mean, he just, he's older. Then I have this live and hilarious, which is all their skits, like who's on first and stuff. And then the Colgate Comedy Hour. But I like Adam Costello. Just like I like the Three Stooges. Uh, let's see what else. Best of the Best 3. The last good Best of the Best movie. Um, I enjoy this film. No turning back. He's fought for honor, revenge, now he's fighting for freedom. Sorry. Nature of the Beast. Unfortunately, this one's directed by the dipshit Victor Salva, who likes to touch little kids, and also directed Jeepers Creepers. I do like this movie, though. Eric Rowers and Lance Hamerson, mainly for these two. Eric Rowers and Lance Hamerson facing off against each other in this sort of thriller. One's a robber, one's a killer. You're not supposed to know who's who. Nature of the Beast. But I like the film. The performance is alone. This I got because I want to do... I want to... I do want to watch all of Van Damme's movies and do a marathon of reviews on them one day. Um, this is before I realized I could have just seen the shit online. But I got this for cheap. Black Eagle. So one day I can tear this film a new asshole. Again. <laughs> One day I will, though. Like I said, Nine Hill. I liked it. Thought it was kind of fun. Funny at times. Good performances. I'll admit it. Uh, spontaneous Combustion. I got it. I keep it because I like Brad Dourif. Has some interesting special effects. It's good by Toby Hooper. It's very disappointing, though. The ending is like... Fuck it. We don't know how to end this. Let's just end it. Very piss poor. See, I don't like the fact that this character... I'll spoil it. Fuck it. This character becomes a bad guy at the end. And I'm like... 
wouldn't it have been better if he was like a good guy, but you can't control this shit? And like, how about you have a movie where Brad Dourif doesn't die at the end? I mean, like a film that he stars in, you know, like he stars in, and he's a good guy, and he lives at the end. Like the Halloween remakes, that's the only thing I can say is Brad Dourif. He, he's a good guy, and he doesn't die. <laughs> Unlike Critters Four, and One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and uh, you know, Graveyard Shift, and this film. <laughs> it's like he's always dying. You know, fuck's sake. Oliver Gruner, one of his best films, Automatic, which I don't think has ever been put on DVD. Programmed to defend, determined to survive. Automatic. Really enjoy this film. Solid flick. I don't know people, you know, will you bitch about T2? Well, I like T2, but I like this film. Um, I did rewatch this film more than Terminator 2, I will admit. Only because no one talks about this film. Everybody knows T2. It's just one of those when everybody knows about it, it's like, okay, if, you know, I can see it in my mind already. But I'm like, okay, I'll watch this again, because refresh my memory in a good way. Because then I don't have every single movie committed to memory. But yeah, I like this film. It's like, it has the die-hard approach. And Oliver Gruen's character is an android protecting this woman in a die-hard situation. I liked it. See, when low-budget films, that impresses me more than if you have like a hundred million dollar budget. Um, of course, I I reviewed this film before. Deep Space. With uh, May Rest in Peace, Charles Napier. With Charles Napier, right there, who recently passed away. Murdoch from Ramble 2. Um, but may he rest in peace. Solid film. I do wish though the picture quality was better so it wasn't as dark. Uh, I actually uh, emailed the director one time and he said he was trying to work on a an actual DVD with you know I don't know if that's ever gonna happen but I did get in touch with the director and saying you know but who knows the cowboy way with Kiefer Sutherland and Woody Harrelson. Entertaining film, The Cowboy Way. I like this movie. It's not that bad. Dylan McDermott is the bad guy. Uh, don't recognize the director's name, though. But yeah, I, I was entertained by The Cowboy Way. Let's put this over here. Bird on a Wire, which I'll be honest, Bird on a Wire, I wasn't really impressed with this film too much. I mean, I'll, I'll give it a watch again. But I remember I saw this once, and I wasn't really that impressed. Bird on a Wire. Of course, Mel Gibson being a douchebag, you know, might hurt, might hurt that as well. The Edge, film that I thought was okay. It was okay, you know. When it's these two versus the bear, it was interesting, but when they're versus each other, I didn't really give a shit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I thought this was an okay film. Mad Dog and Glory. In my opinion, kind of an overrated film, I'll be honest. Because I've heard so many good things about this film. I didn't think it was that great. I didn't think Bill Murray was that funny in it, to be honest. I know he's trying to play more of a bad guy, like a gangster, but Bill Murray, I don't think it was that funny. I don't think it was that funny of a movie. and Just kind of a... Yeah, kind of there. Maybe I watch it again. I don't know. Same thing with this film. I mean, this film's okay, but I don't think it's great. Um, Ricochet with Denzel Washington, John Lithgow. He's a cop but he's a murder, and the only man who knows he's innocent is the killer who framed him. Denzel Washington, John Lithgow, and Ice-T. Directed by Russell Mulcahy, who did uh, Highlander. Yeah, this is a film that I don't know, just... 
I don't know if it was the pace or what. Yeah, maybe one of those films I ever watching it, but I remember not being that big of a fan of this film, that, to be honest. Um, Desperate Measures, Michael Keaton, um, direct from the director of Reversal of Fortune and Single White Female. But this film, I mean, I like Michael Keaton's performance, but the plot is stupid. Very stupid plot. I understand that, you know, this killer can save his son, but all these people that are getting hurt and killed by him, I'm like, I understand it's your son, but all these people are getting hurt and killed, and, you know, it's kind of, uh, kind of unfair, you know? <laughs> but I mean, I don't know. This is a film I thought was okay, mainly because of the cast. Man in the Iron Mask. Jeremy Irons, John Malkovich. Gerard Depardieu, Gabriel Byrne, and of course Leo DiCaprio. I mean, again, this is a film I thought was okay. That was okay. Just too long. This is the thing just too long of a movie. This is a fun film with Kevin Klein, Tom Selleck, In and Out. This is a film that was so so. Nine to five. Decided gave it a look. That was a, was okay. Um, this is a film I'll probably get rid of. Disclosure with Michael Douglas and Demi Moore. It was okay. You know I like Michael Douglas. Demi Moore is hot. But yeah, the film just kind of sat there and did nothing for me. So, yep, just go in the dumpster. <clears throat> Well, you sell it. Yeah, get like 50 cents. Nah. Go through all that hassle. No thanks. This one I got because I did that review for the film. And it's still up. Uh, Supernova. I like James Spader in the film. Has some nice uh, effects. Some nice moments, but a lot of problems with the script. Reshooting. Yeah, a lot of problems with the, the story aspects. Now this is a film that I will get rid of because I thought this was a piece of fucking shit that pissed me off the more I thought about it. Flashpoint. Very disappointing movie. Because, you look at this. Political entry, JFK assassinations, conspiracy theories, cowboy style shootouts, secret agents, Chris Christopherson and Treat Williams, two guys I like. Flashpoint. And this is a fucking boring, depressing movie with no fucking ending. You got these two guys, then in the third act, oh, Chris Chris Austin just finds Tree Williams dead. And then, oh, Chris Chris Austin has a little shootout. And one guy is about to shoot him, but he's like, you know, I knew your father. Get out of here. And then Christmas Austin is going to go to the border. So pretty much all the bad guys are going to get away with it. Because the whole point is that they find this guy and he might, you know, this dead body and it has all this money in it. And maybe that has something to do with the assassination years ago. But it's... For a long time, I'm like, like, who is this guy? And I still don't know if Chris Christopherson actually realized who it was. Maybe he did. I don't know. It was an interesting idea, but it could have been a conversation so much better. It's just boring, fucking slow pace, and a shitty ass. This should not be in the action category. This is bullshit. And it's a shitty ending. This movie can kiss my ass. Go fuck itself. That's dumpster material right there. Stream Rates with Tom Savini. Nice video. Principal with Belushi. Who's Jesse Jr.? This is a good film. I like this better than The Substitute, I'll be honest. This is a much better film than The Substitute with uh, Tom Berenger. I think it has a lot more going for it, The Principal. And it came up before 
I like this better than Dangerous Minds as well. I think it came out before either of them. Yeah, because I think this is an 80s film. Yeah. Have a look at right here. 87. Yeah. Strange Brew has some fun with that. Eddie! Whoopi Goldberg. What's up about Whoopi Goldberg? There's only. I could count on one hand how many movies of hers I like. Jumping Jack Flash, I love. Sister Ad, I like. Ghost. Um, uh, Fatal Beauty. And uh, and this one. So, yeah, I guess that is actually one hand. Fine. But I like Eddie. I liked it. Didn't love it, but liked it. Phantasm 2. I know there's a DVD, but it's bare bones, so why the fuck should I get it? And weirdly enough, this cover is better than the DVD. For 10 years, the secret of Paragor Cemetery has remained a mystery. Now the ultimate evil is about to be revealed. Phantasm 2. My favorite fan. To be honest, this is the only Phantasm film I like. I had the first one and I sold the DVD. Because I'm not a fan of the series. I like this one because it's more action oriented. You have Reggie with that weird shotgun contraption. This just had a better pace, action. But the the problem with these movies, they always end in a stupid way. To be continued and then it's never finished. And the fourth one, you can kiss my ass. Link, I did a review for this film. For thousands of years, man has enslaved the ape. Now the tables are about to turn. An experiment in terror. I like this film. Um, I like Shakma as well. The thing about Shakma, it has a depressing ending. While this doesn't, but Shakma has a better pace than this film. But that's Link. I like Link. Same guy who directed Psycho 2 and Road Games, Richard Franklin. Solid director who's no longer with us, which is a shame. Here's a film that I wish was on DVD. <laughs> The Taking of Beverly Hills with Ken Wall and Matt Frewer. The richest city in America is shut down, ripped off, and blown up. I enjoy this film a lot, The Taking of Beverly Hills. Very, very fun movie. I remember the action scene with the... There's one with like... A, and also another song with a, a Faith No More's Epic. I mean, just a lot of explosions, a lot of good stuff. That's a film I enjoy a lot more than, like, Blown Away or anything like that. Uh, that's a girl over here. Ernest Goes to Camp. Because, again, I'm a fan of Ernest. One of his, one of my least favorite of the Ernest films, to be honest. But I like it okay. Bad Medicine. This is a film I saw with Steve Grunberg, and I don't remember it. <laughs> That's sad. I saw this once and I didn't remember anything about it. That's pretty fucking sad. Um, this is a very shitty action movie that maybe I'll review one day. Steel Justice with Mr. Crease himself, Martin Cove. Martin Cove as Steel, a battle hard spirit guards vent, unable to find his niche in mainstream America. But when Southern California's drug running Vietnamese mafia <laughs> murders his best friend, Steel finds a new war to fight and unleashes an action packed array of blazing firepower and deadly finesse known as Steel Justice. No, Marco seems like he's fucking clumsy. He doesn't know how to handle guns at times. And there's not that much action. It's just boring. Bullshit. Yeah, I think there's another film I'm going to get rid of. From the director of Tango and Cash, Homer and Eddie, James Belushi, Whoopi Goldberg. Just, I don't know, just rub me the wrong way. And I think it ends with Whoopi Goldberg getting killed or something like that. She dies or something. I can't fucking remember. I was like, I don't care. Dumpster. Maverick, again, 
I liked it, but I don't know if I watch it, even with Mel Gibson. But I remember liking it. Fatal Beauty. Whoopi Goldberg film that a lot of people did not like, but it's not. It's more of an action film than a comedy, and uh, I did like the film, Fatal Beauty. Pacific Heights with Michael Keaton. Um, this is another film I'll get rid of because Michael Keaton, once again, he's good. He's not the problem. It's just the rest of the movie is the problem. Yeah, Michael Keaton's good. It's just the rest of the movie, I don't give a fuck. Nah, I'll keep it for Michael Keaton's performance. Maybe I will watch it again. Komodo. This film is PG-13 and... I found it kind of boring, but idea maybe I'll rewatch this again one time and give it another look. Because some of these I don't remember. Uh, Millennium. The people aboard Flight 35 are about to land 1,000 years from where they plan to. Millennium. We've been expecting you. And there's Millennium with Chris Christopherson. And I'll probably get rid of this film because I remember this film boring the shit out of me. The Paper. With Michael Keaton, Randy Quaid, Glenn Close, Marissa Tomei, Robert Duvall. Uh, I remember the film being okay. Yeah, I remember it being an okay film by uh, Ron Howard. Asteroid with Michael Bean. A film I saw once and I don't remember anything about it. It was pretty sad. This is a two hour version edited for video. Um, yes. Asteroid. The end of the world is just beginning. Michael Bean. <clears throat> Doc Hollywood with Michael J. Fox. A film I do like with Michael J. Fox. Woody Harrelson. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's see. Um... I think I'm going to do another trip to get some of these up there so that I'll have more room. So, people are like, why don't you, shit, why don't you cut it? And I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> nah, that's it. Right. So I'll do whatever the hell I want. It's my video. Nah, seriously, it's just because it's just easier to do it this way. I'm lazy to cut it. Come on. No one up there. Right there. Put that here. Let's see. Let's get these. Let's get these safe. Might as well get these two. Don't break my finger. Shit. Phew, shit. 
shit. Ah, much better when you have more room. Now I need more room to get this stuff over here. Alright. Got Johnny Mnemonic, which is so, so pretty bad at times. Shut up, stomach. Only time I saw one of these orange. <laughs> kind of weird seeing an orange videotape. It is weird. I just saw you can do this. Oh, yeah, okay. Ooh. Whoop de doo. Didn't save the movie. <laughs> uh, the pickup artist. This one I got because I remember I had a VHS of Predator and the longest time I saw the trailer to this film, so I decided to see it. Molly Ringwald, Robert Downey Jr. Again, I saw this film and I don't remember anything about it, so may have to rewatch that again. Um let's see. I like a film called They Call Me Bruce, and this is the sequel, They Still Call Me Bruce. I'm being chased by the meanest, nastiest, ugliest game in town, but I'm not taking any bull. Starring Johnny Yoon, Robert Delamy, and Pat Paulson. They still call me Bruce. So. Um, Last Light with Kiefer Sullivan and Forrest Whitaker. Prison movie. Good performances. This is directed by Kiefer Sutherland. Yeah. Yeah, definitely good performances. <coughs> Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Good film. Moontrap, which I kept the VHS because I like the VHS. I like the, the look of it. Awesome, underrated movie. I know those people who made this, they wanted to get a sequel made. And hey, send us your money. And I'm like, no. I don't care about a sequel to Moontrap 2 where you don't have Walter Kane in bad, you don't have Bruce Campbell bad, obviously. It's like a shitty directed DVD sequel to Moontrap, that's not what we want. We want to have this film on actual fucking DVD with features. If you can't understand that, then I'm sorry. Lick of Time with Johnny Depp. Interesting idea for a film. That's the ending. It's not that great, to be honest. That's kind of the problem with this film. But the idea is very interesting. Nick of Time, Christopher Walken. It's a good bad guy. Johnny Depp. Interesting idea. Ninety minutes, six bullets, no choice. It's supposed to be in quote real time. Interesting idea, but I don't think it was pulled off the best way. This is a film I enjoy with Bill Paxton. Louis Gasser Jr. Monolith. I like the film. I mean, the effects could be improved a little bit, but I like Monolith. I had a lot of fun with it. Crossworlds. This is that film with Roger Hauer, uh, where he had like a scepter and he opens worlds. And uh, I didn't mind the film too much. I remember seeing it on cable way back in the day. Best of the best, the first one. Try and go faster because it's over an hour long now. Life Force. It has some nice effects in it. Dutch. Which I didn't mind. I like Ed O'Neill. But I don't think Ed, I don't think Ed O'Neill's a fan of this movie. I think it kinda just hurt his career or something. And plus the kid's kind of fucking an asshole. Blue Steel. I like the film okay. I just have problems with the, the plot. I really do. Like, I know Ron Silver's just crazy, but just, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe they built it up more. Or the fact that this girl's like a rookie cop, then all of a sudden she's a plain clothes cop, and then all of a sudden she's doing this, and all of a sudden she's supposed to be off the case five times, but not. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, does this script, like, did, did someone fart on the script? And like, 
I don't know. I did review this film. The plot doesn't make a lot of sense to me. That's the problem. You know, Ron Silva's character doesn't make a lot of sense. The the fact that, okay, she's a rookie cop her first day, and then all of a sudden, like, here's a gun. No one fucking saw the other gun. Especially the guy who was right in front of her. Oh, sorry, no one saw this guy pull out a gun in his entire fucking grocery store. Especially the guy who was right in front of the guy. What? Oh, just people acted like fucking stupid, but Jamie Lee Curtis was good, and it has a great ending. The ending's great. I just wish the rest of the movie was up to that, but the ending's great, but the rest of the movie... I like it for the ending, but the first two-thirds were could have been better, in my opinion. There's a Tira, which I had the DVD probably get rid of it, because this actually has the better voice cast in it, which pissed me off when I got the DVD and they changed the voice cast. Like, what the fuck? Scanners 2, The New Order, which to be honest, I like better than the first Scanners. I like Scanner Cop the most, speaking of which. I think this is the best Scanner film out there, Scanner Cop. Which actually, I want to see this sometime. Again, I mean, I like Steamer Drop. All of Me might be a f well, nah, I guess I won't get rid of, but maybe I'll watch it again if I don't. I remember not liking this film that much, but I'll watch it again, and if it pisses me off, I'll get rid of Stephen Wright Live. Very funny. Also, another stand up, Andrew Dice Clay Live. Let's see, um, Billy Jack got this from from my mom. Um, she's a fan of Billy Jack and asked, "Hey, check this out sometimes." So I'll check it out sometime. Um, see. Romancing the Stone. That was okay, but to be honest, I think this film's kind of overrated. I'll be honest. I mean, it's okay, but I don't think it's that great to have gotten all that big box office. The Make Them Ninja Turtles Behind the Shells, which is not on any DVD release for some fucking reason. Stupid. The Vagrant. Kind of a horror comedy with uh, Bill Paxton. Because that's their take on Home Alone. He's not Home Alone. It says right there. Same guy who directed The Fly 2. Directed this film. and It's an interesting, weird, quirky, horror, kind of dark comedy with uh, Bill Passon and Michael Ironside, Marshall Bell. Definitely an interesting film, The Vagrant. I think I reviewed this film one time. This is The Horror Show. Well, not really. Coming out of the Shells tour, which is fucking abysmal. Abysmal. I don't know why I haven't thrown it away yet, but I haven't. Santa Claus. Because I wanted to check it out again, because I like Tim Allen, but... Not one of his best movies. People vs. Larry Flint. Good performances. Interesting story. Let's see. Uh, Firestorm. Kind of a so so action movie. Has some good physical stunt work. Howie Long, though, is not really the best of the best. Multiplicity, I think Harold Ramis directed this. Interesting, kind of funny movie. I like Michael Keane's good in the film. I think for me though, it would have been more interesting if it wasn't when he multiplied, if it actually was the exact same copy, if it wasn't like, okay, one's a and one's a and one's a uh, whatever. I think it would have been more funny if it was actually multiplied him and like people couldn't tell and I was like, what the fuck, what are you doing? But if they acted normal, I guess. This is a film that I watched and I didn't mind. It was definitely fast paced. Carpool with uh, Tom Arnold and David Paymer. Not a great movie at all. It's not a good. I don't know. I thought it was watchable. Carpool. 
It's a watchable movie, I thought. Not only is it one of the worst movies of all time, like it's been considered, so maybe that was why. Dave, where Kevin Kline's are going to Weaver. Entertaining film, Dave, by I think Ivan Reitman. Yeah. Yeah, I like Dave. Straight Talk with Dolly Parton and uh, James Woods. I guess it's mainly because I'm a fan of James Woods. Again, okay film, but I don't remember too much about it, so I have to watch it again. For Richard Rapport with Tim Allen, Chrissy Alley. Kind of a so so film, I'll be honest. A so so flick. But again, wanted to check it out because of Tim Allen. I like Tim Allen. I drew it with Home Improvement, which I have all the whole series on DVD. Then Family Business with Sean Connery, Dustin Hoffman, Matthew Broderick. I'm gonna sell this film. I don't know sell I'm gonna get rid of it, fuck it. This is a shitty film. Just depressing, like it's like you think this is gonna be like a, a comedy and it's not, it's like fucking gets very melodramatic and bullshit. Don't care. Seventh sign. I got this not just not because of Demi Moore, because Michael Bean's in it. Uh, again, this is a film I have to watch again because I I think I tried to see it once and I couldn't get through it. So I'll try again. The final cut with Sam Elliott, which uh, Sam Elliott's uh, trying to stop a bomber. Yeah, this film kind of remind me like if it was a TV movie though. So this film I didn't think was great at all. Kind of mediocre, but I like Sam Elliott in the film, but I thought it was kind of mediocre for yeah, big with Tom Hanks, of course. Um, Santa Claus the movie, because I was curious to see how bad it was, and it is. Um, Taxi Driver, solid film with Robert De Niro. Let's see. Yeah, it's another Steve Austin VHS. Things are tough all over. It's a Cheech and Chon film that I don't love, but it has good moments in it. When it gets with these guys, I think that's when the movie kind of gets lost. Because Cheech and Chon plays two roles. They play normal, then they play these guys chasing these guys. When it's these guys, it's just uh, forgettable. But when it's just them, you know, they start selling the car, car parts to uh, get money and keep going. I don't know. I didn't watch the film, but no, don't love it. But I like parts of it. And cadence, or I think uh, I think you pronounce it cadence. Charlie Sheen's really good, good performance, and uh, good drama. Martin Sheen's good in it as well, and uh, Lawrence Fishburne. Charlie Sheen's finest performance, a film of dramatic power and surprising humor. Sometimes you got to stand out to fit in. Return of the Dragon, where Bruce Lee versus Chuck Norris. I do wish, though, that they would have some way in which you can have actual... I wish there was some way that you could actually have Bruce Lee's voice and Chuck Norris's voice. Not this dubbed bullshit, but fuck it. How do I always fuck it? This is so uh, because I did that review, Speed 2 Cruise Control. I reviewed it and it was a piece of shit. Review's still up. Brain Smasher Love Story with Andrew Dice Clay. Disappointing film. Definitely not as good as Ford Fairlane. Because maybe because it's PG 13, that's why. So that's too bad. The Willies, which is an anthology film. The Out of Towners, which I enjoy with Jack Women. May you rest in peace. A lot of fun. 
French Kiss. Got this because uh, I like Meg Ryan and Kevin Klein. Um, decent flick. Of course, Turner and Hooch. Although I will be honest, I like K9 a lot better. But I like Turner and Hooch. Well, we're getting to the end of it. Um, Chuck Norris 2 pack with uh, Breaker Breaker and Lone Wolf McQuaid. Pretty decent flicks. The Naked Gun, of course. Lizzie Nielsen, may he rest in peace. This is a film I saw and didn't mind too much. With uh, John Larroquette and Bronson Pinchot, Second Sight. He's in the detective biz with a psychic whiz. Second sight. Again, didn't mind the film too much. Super with Joe Pesci. It's a fun movie. Rising Sun with Sean Connery and Wesley Snipes. Not that great, to be honest. Maybe I'll give this a look at the end one day, but didn't think it was that great. Kind of the same thing with this film. Just Cause. Sean Connery and Lawrence Fishburne. I don't remember anything about this movie, to be honest. North? Fuck, do I still have this? That's gone. Did a rant on that, you know my views on that. I didn't forget I still had that. Well, that's gone. Man, the house, which, like Mike OCP, when I talked to him the other night, the film's okay, I guess. It is what it is. It's a fucking Disney movie. It's okay, I guess, yeah. Sniper. Like that. I like the film. Josh and Sam, right run away from home when you can drive. I got this film because I was interested from the plot. As every kid's fantasy and every parent's nightmare when Josh and Sam, fed up with life at home, steal a car and head for the Canadian border, run away the meal with Allison, a streetwise runaway who joins them on their twisting comical journey. I know some, it's the way it's the S-A-M is because like this brother tells that this kid is like uh, some like robot like kind of like that movie Daryl. I forget how the fuck that was. I, I this is a shitty movie though. Wasn't that funny? So get rid of that. Of the last dragon witness the power of the glow. I am the last dragon. Um, this one I'm gonna throw away. Frame up with Wings Hauser. Terrible, terrible movie. I don't want to do reviews on any of these fucking movies. Fuck you. Frame up just sucked. It was boring as hell. That's the review. Two seconds. The Presidio with Sean Connery and Mark Harmon. Liked it. Decent action thriller. Not great, but I liked it okay. This one was a lot of fun. A low down dirty shame. I had a lot of fun with this one. Keen Avery Wayans did a solid job with this. He also wrote it, directed, and starred in it. He did a good job. That's sad Keen Avery Wayans doesn't act anymore because he was really good. I liked him and pretty much all the stuff he did. Most Wanted. Um, even the Glimmer Man, which I know not everybody loves, but I love the Glimmer Man. Scent of a Woman. Too fucking long, though. Two and a half hours? Come on. But Al Pacino does do a good job acting wise. Fatal Instinct with Armand Asante, Sean Young. This place is supposed to be like their parody on Fatal Attraction, Basic Instinct. And basically, I think it's dumpster material. Fuck that movie. Trespass, very forgettable film. 
Not that good at all. Fuck it. That's dumpster too. Like that. Shitty movie. Yeah. That's too kind. It is a shitty film. Relentless. Decent flick. With uh, Judd Nelson as the killer. What planet are you from? This is a bad film, but I don't remember anything of it, so I have to watch it again. I don't remember it being a bad film. That's those stuff. At least I remember. Oh, fuck it. The Boost with James Woods, Sean Young. Imagine the power, passion, pleasure money can buy. Now imagine losing them. Definitely a good performances by James Woods, but it's a very depressing movie. Very depressing. So. I don't want to watch it again. It's too depressing. Um, Ballista X vs. Sever. I thought it was okay. It wasn't the worst fucking... What was that? Uh, Rotten Tomatoes or somewhere. It says it's like the worst film of the decade. I've seen much worse. K-Packs with uh, Jeff Bridges, Tim Spacey. Interesting idea. Also, America with Albert Brooks, highly, highly overrated piece of shit. You want to see a good Albert Brooks movie? Watch Mother. This is a highly over. Lost in America is a highly overrated piece of shit. Nothing happens in this fucking movie. It's, oh shit, uh, we're going to go to LA. No, we're going to go to Vegas. Shit, I don't. I'm trying to remember. Albert Brooks quits his job because he had a lot of money saved up. Go to Vegas. Stupid Julie Hattery spends it all. Of course, everybody would be pissed. I wouldn't blame him. But then Julie Hattery's like, well, <laughs> well, fuck you, Julie Hattery. You just wasted hundreds of thousand dollars, you fucking dumb bitch. Then they have to figure out what to do. They land in some small town. Our books is a crossing guard. And then, basically, the movie is oh, they went back and he found them and they got the job back. What the fuck? Fuck that movie. This was a better film. I were both defending your life. This is better. I'll admit that. This is more interesting flick. This is a highly piece of shit. But the reason I'm not throwing away is because one day I want to see. Well, I want to review the transfer films and then I'll review this film. And I want to break it on fucking camera. Slipstream. Not that good of a movie. I didn't throw it away because I want to see it again. Because it has Mark Hamill and Bill Paxton. Give it another look, but not that great. Half Bait. Fun movie. Addicted to Love. Decent romantic comedy type flick. Because I like the two actors. The Pest. Pretty fucking annoying. But I want to see it again with John Ledger's Island because I want to give it another shot. <clears throat> Tim Cup. I like Kevin Costner in this film. Cheech Merritt, Rene Russo, Don Johnson. I like the cast. Italian Job. I got to give Mark Wahlberg at least this film. This was a decent flick. Shades the Clown. Weird flick with Bobcat Goldthwait. Um... Yeah, definitely a weird flick. I think actually Adam Sandler has a supporting role as well. It's definitely a, a weird, weird flick. I think he directed it. Yeah, he wrote and directed this too, Bob Jack Goldthwait. Definitely a weird film. <clears throat> Keeping the Faith. Film I want to watch again because I like this cast. Ben Siller, Jen Elfman, uh, Edward Norton. I want to give it another look. Solid film, shoot the kill. Especially Tom Berenger, Sidney Portier. <clears throat> Live Wire, very good flick with uh, Pierce Brosnan. Very nice idea to <clears throat> <clears throat> I like the idea behind the song. Check out the trailer, whatever. Check out this movie, you'll know what I mean. Won't spoil it. And then the net was Sandra Bullock. Solid thriller. I like I like this film a lot. 
Alright, that's all the VHS's. As you can see, i getting rid of a lot. So, actually this is a good idea. I got rid of some that I'm never going to watch and I'm not going to review because I don't want to take my time to watch them. <laughs> but anyway, thanks for sitting through this hour and a half long uh, VHS update. Thanks for watching and hope you had a happy Thanksgiving and a safe Black Friday. And we will see you later. Ciao.